Welcome back YouTube, it's a Drunk Capitalist here again, and I have another video, this time a review. Excuse my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather, having some allergies, so I sound a little bit nasally right now, but without further ado, so I wanted to review Millennial Money for a while now because I always see it and it's one of the most interesting series that CNBC actually has. And you get to see insight into a lot of people's lives, their money, their relationship with money, how they spend it, how they could be better, or how they can, you know, kind of ease up on themselves a little bit. So this is my first time reviewing one of their videos, and I thought this one was super interesting, which is why I'm going to start with it. And it's a rapper that makes $82,000 a year. Now, you see, when we see rappers, we're used to seeing them make millions and millions of dollars, quote unquote, which is probably not really the case most of the time like there are huge rappers that make a lot of money but it takes a lot to get to that point um a lot of people try to become rappers and they fail miserably <laughs> like and i'm happy to watch this this video i haven't seen it yet i want to see how he's accomplished eight two thousand dollars a year because the majority like 99 percent of rappers do not make any money rapping um but they end up spending a lot of money trying to become rappers. So I'm interested to see how he did this, especially since it looks like he's gone an alternative route because it's in the title, it says on Fiverr. So let's see what happens. Look at how I did it. They ain't really feel it, but I had to make it happen to build up a foundation. Talk of the town, had to shut it down in the booth, stomping on the ground, got the ground shaking. There we go. Mic check one, two. I drive a lot without the okay. radio on. Okay. The silence is where the music actually happens. I heard someone say music is not the sounds, it's the silence in between the sounds. It don't come from taking things in, it comes from letting things cook. Like I said, $82,000 a year. He's doing better than a lot of people out here. Rhyming. My name is Mike Burton. I'm 38 years old. I live in Houston, Texas, and I'm a rapper on Fiverr. Okay, so he makes customized rap songs for clients on Fiverr since 2016. Songs for people's podcasts, for their YouTube intro, songs for loved ones, anything where a song can be made that rap is required. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much going to be. I mean, this is really cool. I might hit him up if I'm interested in getting like a rap song. <laughs> That's how I like my combo. You can save your opinion. I'm gonna write it down, ball it up, then kick it with a one-two combo like that. The process of making a song for Fiverr, I have it set for three days, but realistically, it can take me. It could take me 30 minutes. If they give me a title of a show, I technically count the syllables. The name of the show is I don't know. Get money now. Get money now. So you can go get money now. We gonna print it. Da da da. We gonna get money. Count the syllables, you find the rhythm. You gotta understand who you're speaking to and what do you need them to know in one sentence. And that's why. I See, this is one of the things that people like overlook is that you can be really talented at something, but it doesn't guarantee that you'll have astronomical success. So a lot of people end up quitting on their rap career because they don't have that huge uh, rap fame like they don't because they don't become Drake in two or three years, they're like, oh, I gotta quit this thing or, or they keep going when they don't actually have any of the talent. But he seems to have found his talent, maybe or maybe not, doesn't really feel like doing the whole touring and being a signed rapper and doing all the shebang. And he's like, I'm gonna hone in into a specific niche. This is what I'm gonna be doing. This is how I'm gonna capitalize on my talent. And this is how I'm gonna spend my time. Like you just heard him say, I give people three days. I, I tell them three days, but it really takes me like 30 minutes. <laughs> Cause he understands that he, his craft he probably does it over and over again and he understands his market his niche and he under he just understands what it is that he's after so i think that makes all the difference when you have a specific talent it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be like if you're a painter you're supposed to be the next basquiat sometimes you're a painter but your art is just meant to be sold um on reprints at ikea maybe you know what i mean like it's not everything is for everybody I can chop up that sentence and then put words and rhythm behind it, and then it'll make it memorable. I grew up in a household that was predominantly R&B, jazz, 
It wasn't until about 90, 91, where I was around my cousins. They put me on Run DMC, they put me on Crisscross. Crisscross was like the Ooh. entrance level. I loved Crisscross when I was younger. And mind you, they were way older than me at the time. Like, cause I think they probably came out in the nineties and I was born in the nineties. So like when I found Crisscross, like it was way later, like they had been grown people at that time. Um, I also loved Run DMC and I found them be obviously because I I'm a lot younger. I found them from watching Run's house when I was a kid. I was like, Run, who's Rev Run? Then I found out like his whole family, you know, you know, like the whole history. And then my Adidas, uh, yeah, like that whole thing. Like they were just, the rhythm was just so crazy. And I was like, what is this? I became obsessed Ooh. with it. When I first started writing my own songs, I was maybe 10, and it was pretty much copying what I heard on the radio, you know, Snoop Dogg. I just try to mimic and try to write like how they sound in my head, but it wouldn't be anything beyond just putting rhyming words together. So you went to college. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that I eventually had to grow up and get a job, but I just couldn't figure it out. I mean, a lot of people go through that. They go to they go to college. They don't really know what they want to do. Funny enough, a lot of people in communications don't know what they want to do. They're like, all right, communications. It can apply to a bunch of different things, so I'm gonna do that. That way, I have time to figure it out later. Um, so that happens to a lot of people. They they go to college and they're still lost. I saw people that had high school diplomas and they were working alongside me. So I'm like. I'm obviously not using the degree that I got, and I'm just like, what am I doing with myself? It just felt like a lonely path. So I'm like, I got all this energy. I'm almost 30, and I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing. And I felt like I needed to do something different, but I knew music was the Oh, wow, and that's a long time to be almost 30 and still not knowing. So sometimes you got to fall back on the thing that you actually enjoy and you like. What I needed to do. It had to. So I was like, I'm too good. I believe in myself too much. That's cool. <laughs> it wasn't until many years later, I was actually in between work. For some reason, I got back on Fiverr and I saw that people were mixing songs and rapping. I checked out some of the rappers. I'm like, I don't know, I could do this. So he joined Fiverr and then quit. I'm telling you, rappers will rap and then quit. And then some of them, the ones that really stay the longest are the ones that are don't have any talent. But a lot of people like rap and then quit because they don't see success like instantaneously. Because I mean, obviously in this time, day and age, we live in a world of instantaneousness. Like someone could like post like 10 videos on TikTok and then the 11th video gets a million views and then now they got sponsorships and all that stuff. So we're, instant, we're used to this like instant gratification. Even back in like the times of like 2013, 2014, 2015, when rap just started exploding, like absolutely everybody and their mother was listening to rap music um, and things like that. It's like, it made it, it, because it exploded so much because of like the SoundCloud era, everybody became a rapper. It made it seem so easy. Like all you have to do is drop five songs and now you're a famous rapper <laughs> and it's like, Actually, nah, it really just doesn't work. But it's cool that he used Fiverr for his own uh, purchasing of art for his uh, album cover, then joined Fiverr in order to do it and then quit Fiverr, but then joined again and then found success. Sometimes it takes multiple tries. My gig was so, I just didn't understand it. It was a kid, he said, make a song about how it's okay to listen to Eminem. That's so complex. And I was like, I canceled it. I was like, yeah. So random. That sounds like a term paper, not a rap, not a verse. But then I came it back again nice. because, I don't know, just curiosity. And I was like, let me try it again. I was working, but I wanted to see if I can just make a little extra side money. And you don't even know why this person wants this song. Make a song about it that it's okay to listen to Eminem. I'm like, what kind of request is that? It's so random, but it's like what someone wanted. They want this product. They want to hear about a, a, so a song that makes them feel better about listening to Eminem. Come on now. Niche, niche, niche. Five dollars for about 30 seconds of music. Okay. Well, pretty low, but hey. Extra over the next few months writing songs for clients. So it's, it's a slow grind, a slow build. We leave his job to record the songs during his lunch breaks. 
because he could do that joint quick. Called me in and said, Mike, can you come to the office? I was like, oh, I'm finna get fired. And they said, you know, we gotta let you go. It were emotional, like, chill, I'm gonna be all right. My manager said, uh, I know you're still doing that music thing. I hope that works out for you. He didn't say it sarcastic. And I was like, I appreciate that, man. Mike, check one, two. All right, you wanna do it like that. So I guess they fired him for like going on his breaks and making music, um, which I find kind of ridiculous if you're on your break. You're not required to eat or do anything other than whatever it is that you want to do. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I understand if he was taking a lunch break and then making his lunch breaks an hour and a half. But, like, I don't really see why they would do something like that. But, you know, some people just be hating. They just be hating. I make a rap for your Valentine's. I make a rap for people's birthday. There's nothing corny about making money off of what you're doing. There's, there's nothing corny about that. So now Facts. I can fund the music I, I want to make. So win win. 16 bars of music and 200 for a full song. Honestly, I feel like that's kind of low. I feel like it can be increased, but I keep it that way. I feel like oh. I definitely over deliver with what you're asking as far as the, the skill. And then if you want a video, which is a performance of me rapping the original song, then that's an additional $100 to whatever you that's, order. I'm writing, recording, mixing. He's, he's doing his thing, to be honest. And he's not even doing it like at a, a huge expensive price. Like, I think it's undervalued for what he's doing, especially with his, you know, length of experience and everything that he's doing. I think he could charge a lot more. But like you said, he wants it to be more accessible. So kudos to him for that. I mean, editing, the amount of work all that can cost is hundreds, if not a thousand dollars. So I'm keeping it insanely low cost for what I'm doing. I'm write it down, ball it up, then kick it with a one, two combo like that. I always have goals every year, how much I want to bring in. That drives me. That makes He actually kind of sounds like uh, Kendrick a little bit. Makes me go harder in December. Makes me get ambitious. I always want to make a hundred thousand. And as I get to that, I want to make more. But I had to make it happen and build up a found, but I had to make it happen and build up a foundation. Look at how I did it. They didn't really feel it, but I had to make it happen and build up a found. Yeah, so because they take 15%, personally, I would raise that. <laughs> like, I would raise the price. That way that 15% doesn't feel like, you know, it's being taken from me. Okay. I just had to make me a song, yeah. There are certain types of songs I won't produce. Anything with violence, cursing, profanity. I'll do diss songs, but I have to know that it's really just fun. Like everything is very lighthearted and silly. The things that we make last beyond our lifetime. So why are you gonna leave some toxic sludge? And then I'm acting as a conduit for your ideas. And I don't want that sludge in my system. That's, that's facts. Like you definitely don't want that. <laughs> like I understand his, his, where he's coming from with the whole negativity and toxicity stuff like at least he's staying away from all that making time seems for like a good guy is mandatory i'll have no energy for anyone else if i don't make my own stuff i've done it i burnt out i start running out of ideas for people but when i can do my own thing then i get rejuvenated i said okay what you want me to do i got you you know what I'm <laughs> there's a time limit i cut it off at a certain time focus on family after that Going in and playing in the backyard, listening to music, which is mostly children's music, you know, Mickey Mouse, but I'm cool with that. I'm listening to the rhythm on Mickey Mouse. I'm like, oh, those drums kind of go hard, okay. You know, I can't turn that off. <laughs> Just... Balancing family life, work, it's a lot of plates. When you're a freelancer, you're technically never off the clock. Even if you're not actually working or if you're going to do something, your subconscious is always conscientious of like, I know I gotta turn something in. I know they want me to, it never stops. I couldn't imagine this would have happened maybe 10 years ago. I, I couldn't see it because the way hip hop was, the way social media was, everything had to align for people to be open to this idea. I was able to come at the right time. It's kind of crazy. I do see myself sticking with this for the long run, but the big picture is to make what I'm doing its own thing because things change, times change. Well, songwriting, ghost writing for other acts and artists, like I never want to stop writing. Writing has always been the primary component to what I do and what I love. Like I'll never stop writing. I love writing for artists. I love writing songs for companies, for businesses. So I'll never stop doing that. So yeah, that was CNBC Make It with a rapper that makes A2K a year. Like I think that was fire. I think everything that he's doing, he's right on track. He's creating his business. He has his niche. He knows what he's doing. He has time and it allows him to do what he really is passionate about. Sometimes it, it goes like that. Sometimes you got to do the thing you are passionate about in order and you do it for someone else and it's not as passionate, but that fuels and funds 
the passion that you you actually have even if it's the same passion just it's different when you do it for yourself sometimes you do have to work that job you don't like in order to pay for your hobbies or the create creative endeavors that you actually want to do like that's just how it is you have to add value somewhere else so that you can you know create something for yourself like it that's just how the world works and he's figured out how to do that and one of the best things for him was losing that job sometimes it feels super scary of course but if you know what for sure what you want to do you're gonna end up doing it anyway so you might as well get started um yeah thank you guys for watching it's the drunk capitalist i'll see you guys next time peace